What's going on guys? Cowboy here, and today we're going to take a look at the long-awaited Far Cry 3. So if you're unfamiliar with the Far Cry series, Far Cry 3 is basically an open-world first-person shooter RPG. And just to give you a little bit of a better idea of what that actually means, in a sense, if you took Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed, tossed it all in a blender, added a little bit of tequila in there, you might have something pop out that looks a little bit like Far Cry 3. But don't let this video fool you. This game's not just about exploring dank caverns and looking for giant piles of heroin. We're actually going to be exploring the giant and mysterious location of Rook Island, which we can see here from our minimap gets pretty big. And along with that, we get to experience a variety of gorgeous island-based landscapes. But I digress. Let's get into the plot. Very early on, we meet our protagonist of Jason Brody, who we quickly find out is a giant pussy. But basically, Jason and some friends are on vacation, they're having a couple of drinks, decide, hey, let's go skydiving. And somewhere between the fourth or fifth shot of Sambuca and jumping out of a plane, they get split up, and they all get captured by pirates. So in short, after escaping, Jason must find his friends and make his way across Rook Island. But along our trek of Rook Island, we'll do a variety of things, such as harvesting plants, hunting animals, and of course, my personal favorite, taking down pirates. As you can see right here, Jason has quickly grown some hair on his sack as he proceeds to go ahead and stab this guy right in the chest. Good for you, Jason. The game actually involves a pretty entertaining level up system, which involves three trees, the heron, the spider, and the shark. The heron is our first tree, which involves long range takedowns and mobility. We have the shark, which involves assault takedowns and healing. And then finally we have the spider, which involves stealth takedowns and survival. The game also features a fairly robust crafting system, in which you'll use the plants you harvest to create syringes, and the animal skins you harvest to increase your carrying capacity for equipment, ammunition, and of course my personal favorite, more arrows. Another nice feature is the handbook, which will include a list of progression for all the different objectives within the game, a full list of statistics for just about anything you could imagine, a survival guide, which will list the various people, places, locations, and items you've encountered in your journeys, a list of the various collectibles you're trying to seek out, a quick start guide, which will give more detailed information about control schemes and tips for various things you're going to do within the game, and of course, a full built-in user manual that involves every single thing you could possibly need to know about the game. So let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. One of my personal favorite things about the game is that you can simply just toss a rock out and get potential OB attackers to come on over. And of course, through the use of a bow, we can do basically a full stealth playthrough where we just shoot every pirate in the face with an arrow. But it's not just about bows and rocks. Of course there's going to be guns involved. It's Far Cry. So we can see right here in a life-threatening situation as I attempt to gun down an army of pirates with an AK-47 I had recently stolen. Things can get pretty heated, but, I mean, hey, if you don't know how to shoot a gun, you probably shouldn't be playing Far Cry. After all, it is a first-person shooter. The hunting is also very well done with a variety of animals to go after. One of the nice things about hunting is you can use a syringe to basically increase your hunter's instinct. And by doing this, as you can see right here, we are able to see the outline of an animal through various foliage and other objects to increase our chances of hunting them down and getting that kill. And of course, once we successfully get our kill, we're able to skin the animal, take the hide, and then as mentioned before, we're able to use it to craft new upgrades, which also can be done on the fly anywhere you're at. The game also features a variety of ways to travel by land, air, or sea. So we can see right here we have gliders, cars to ramp through the forest with, good old fashioned dune buggy, an ATV for a little off-roading, and of course if we want to get a little more wet, we have the boat. But it's not just about the variety of travel, it's about the actual travel itself. And in that regards, Far Cry certainly delivers. Unlike most open world games, the actual vehicle maneuverability and driving in Far Cry feels very realistic, and when you're ramping through a forest going 50 miles an hour trying to avoid trees, you certainly do feel like you're hanging on for your life. In keeping with that theme of realism, when your vehicle gets damaged in Far Cry, it's not like some games where, you know, you might just get a little busted side pan on your car still moves. Oh no, trust me, when your car crashes in Far Cry, there's a good chance it's going to light on fire, and along with it, so are you. But any game this big and beautiful has to have a few glitches, am I right? What started as shooting a pirate in the chest is now a magic trick with a floating arrow. But hey, we were able to pick it back up. And one of the most prevalent things I'm seeing on the Xbox is the shadows in the game seem to be a little bit odd. As you can see right here on the hand and gun, there's a bit of a fuzzy black shadow that just seems to constantly be there. But don't let a little glitch here and there scare you off. At its core, 
Far Cry 3 is still an amazing game that features in-depth gameplay, breathtaking environments, plenty of side quests, and a story that will keep you entertained as you fight for your survival on Rook Island. Just in case single player wasn't enough, Far Cry 3 also features a co-op campaign, multiplayer, and a map editor. The co-op campaign follows a story separate from Jason Birdie and his friends. So we can see here in the co-op campaign you pick one of four characters, each which has a separate loadout, and basically play with one of your friends, either split screen or online, to make your way across Rook Island in their own personal adventure. And last but not least, of course, we have the map editor, a returning favorite from Far Cry 2. If you've never experienced the map editor before, it's a whole new way to play a multiplayer game. With this, you can basically create maps exactly to your liking and do a variety of things, whether you just want to mix up the terrain, add buildings, animals, all sorts of things, even change the damn weather. So whether you want to actually, you know, build a town that you can play on with the public, or if you're playing with friends, perhaps you just want to make a hole that's so deep that when they fall down, they'll never get out. Whatever the case is, you can do it in the Far Cry 3 map editor. In conclusion, between the engrossing single player experience and the fun filled multiplayer, Far Cry 3 is definitely one of the games you should look forward to this holiday season. After all, in how many games can you kill a bull shark with a compound bow and then swim over and skin it? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and for more Far Cry 3 content, make sure to check back December 4th for walkthroughs, tips, and tricks. If you guys are interested in another kind of open world experience, be sure to check out my live stream of the new Dragonborn DLC for Skyrim that'll be happening on the 4th as well. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you with the next video. Assuming Jason doesn't drown right here.